morning, good morning, everybody. I want to welcome you to the Church 110 online Easter digital experience, okay? I'm Minister RJ, Minister Rodney, whatever you want to call me. I am a minister here at Church 110. And again, welcome, welcome, welcome to our online Easter service, all right? Now, we're doing Easter a little bit differently this, this year. What do I mean? I mean that because we're still kind of in a pandemic, we wanted to take Easter to you. For those that wouldn't be able to join us here in the building uh, and have Easter next to us, <laughs> we wanted to put Easter in a box and deliver it to you, which is what we got a chance to do this year. So what we did was we compiled uh, a bunch of Easter boxes, we shredded up some paper, we put a few cards in there with some Easter scriptures on there, but most importantly, what we did was we put a few cups of communion uh, in each box. So we got some grape juice and we got some wafers, all right? So we're gonna be doing communion together, regardless of where you are. And listen, it's gonna be a good one. It's gonna be a good day. You know why? Because regardless of where you are, Jesus rose from the dead. And listen, that's something to be excited about, okay? I'm excited, hopefully you are. We're getting ready to get started. Now, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna give you a few announcements, a few reminders. We'll have the sermon uh, from Apostle Johnson and then I'll come back and remind you to pull out those Easter cups, those Easter boxes, and uh, we're gonna take communion together. So the first thing that we need to remind you of is to remind you to share this Easter service, okay? Take a few pictures, take a few snapshots, all right, of you taking communion together as a family and you taking communion with us as a family. Uh, also, be sure to share the service on YouTube, on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter, wherever it is that you deem necessary. Uh, <laughs> share it out to everybody, okay? Also, if you would like to support us financially, the give link is in the description right below this video so you can click the link we made it easy for you and you can uh, share uh, your financial uh, blessings or donations right through that link also be sure to subscribe and follow us on social media on YouTube again we're on Facebook and Instagram you can find us at this is church 110 and also if you would like to connect with us feel free to visit the website at church 110.com lastly Listen, on Monday nights, we have what's called Monday Night Live. It's a live Facebook stream where me and Apostle Johnson, we sit down and we talk about how to make the Sunday service applicable. How do you walk this thing out, all right? It's a time where you get a chance to ask questions. We get a time uh, to answer your questions, comments, and concerns, and we do this all live. We have music in the background, and it's a ton of fun, okay? Ask your friends. It's amazing, all right? Listen, I want to welcome you again for tuning in to this Easter service, all right? I'm going to bring up Apostle Johnson. I'll be back to remind you to grab those communion cups so we can do this thing together as a family. Thank you again for tuning in, and without further ado, here's Apostle Johnson. Good morning, everyone. So delighted that you're taking our time to be with us here at Church 110's Digital Experience on Easter Sunday, celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Well, okay, listen, this is Easter Sunday, and we're getting ready to get into something. But before we do, let's pray and ask the, the Lord's blessings upon this word this morning. Pray with me, will you? Father, thank you so much for another awesome, awesome opportunity to be here to share your word with those on the other side of this camera. Thank you for this is Easter, a time of celebration. And Father, we know that we don't just celebrate the resurrection of your son just on one day out of the year, but it is a constant thing in our hearts that we celebrate the resurrection of your son. And we thank you so much because we would not be where we are right now had it not been for that resurrection. And so, Father, I pray that by the power of your spirit, that you would help us to understand and to really look at your heart concerning the resurrection of your son. So, Lord, bless this word. Let it fall on good ground. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Okay, Easter, celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I have a question for you. Have you ever celebrated something yet your heart wasn't in it? You really had no affection for it? You were there, but not there. There's been many times I've been invited to places and I really didn't want to go. And when I got there, 
The celebration was on and popping, okay? So I, have, I put a smile on my face. I act like I really enjoyed being there, but my heart really wasn't there. My affection was not there. Today, this is Easter, and we're talking about the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. But I want to talk about something, about two words concerning the resurrection. Number one, embracing the resurrection and celebrating the resurrection, all right? Embracing what you celebrate. Embracing what you celebrate. Let's go to the word. In 1 Peter 1, 3, in the, S, in the ESV version, it says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to his great mercy. He has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. All right, I want to read that in, in the NLT version. And listen to what it says. I love this version pertaining to this verse. It says, All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is by His great mercy that we have been born again. Because... God raised Jesus from the dead. Now we live with great expectation. I love that verse. You know, and you know, the Bible says that praise be to God. And you know, he deserves all the praise. But you know what? Dealing with or celebrating, you know, things that we celebrate. We celebrate birthdays. We celebrate weddings. We celebrate anniversaries. We celebrate baby showers. We celebrate so much in this life. And there's nothing wrong with celebrate, celebrating something that you enjoy, that you love. I believe that God just put that in us, all right? So... When you celebrate something, celebrate means to acknowledge a significant day or event with a social gathering or enjoyable activity. In other words, you honor or praise publicly. You honor or praise publicly because you're in, you're in the celebration mode, all right? You're in the celebration mode. And you want other people to celebrate with you. But I like that definition where it says to honor or praise publicly. What is praise? What really is praise? Someone said that praise is the expression of what we celebrate. Praise is the expression of what we celebrate. I like what, what C.S. Lewis said. He said, I think we delight to praise what we enjoy because praise not only merely expresses but completes the enjoyment, right? It, give me some background. on C.S. Lewis had a problem, had a problem about praise. When God it said in his word, let everything that has breath praise him. He had a problem with that because he thought God was on an ego trip. So he thought he was on the ego trip. So until the Lord revealed to him that praise is something that we do every day. You know, we praise our wives. We praise our husbands. We praise our children. We praise our friends. We, we praise our lovers. We praise all this because, you know, because we enjoy. And if we, if we enjoyed it and didn't praise, let me say it this way. Praise actually puts the icing on the cake because praise says, I enjoy this and I'm going to express what I enjoy. So it's important that we understand, I think we delight to praise what we enjoy because praise not merely expresses, but completes the enjoyment. In verse three, it says, all praise to God, the father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, all praise to God, the father. Listen, first of all, Concerning the resurrection, we ought to praise God, who is the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, we give Him all the glory. That word, that word, bless God or, or bless be the Lord. You are speaking well of Him. You're speaking well of Him, regardless of what your day looks like, regardless 
of what your circumstances are. You're speaking well. And the Bible is full of praise to God, all right? So all praise, praise to God, all the praise go to Him of our Lord Jesus Christ. We have been born again because God raised Jesus Christ. All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, because of His mercy, because of His love, because of His grace, okay? We have been born again because He raised Jesus from the dead. Now we live with great expectations. Now, I like that. See, because once you understand that why God raised Jesus from the dead, and you understand why you're born again. Now you're living with a great expectation. I'm reminded, I'm reminded of what of the Word of God says that the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is the same Spirit that abides in our mortal bodies. And He is going to raise us from the dead. That's just a portion of our great expectation. You know, and even though this, this physical body is going to perish, that we're going to raise from the dead and give us another body, another tabernacle to dwell in. It's going to be exciting. We're going to be just like Jesus, able to appear and disappear. We're going to be able to talk. We're going to be able to eat. We're going to be able to fellowship. There's so much ahead for us because God raised Jesus from the dead. And it's very, very important. Now, when you think about, you think about the, the resurrection Easter, many people express the celebration of Easter through their praise, okay? Now, I know there's been many times in services I've been saved for many years, and I know on, on Easter, I mean, boy, we praise, and we, as we say, we go in, all right? There's a praise, there's a, there's a, there's a, a vibrant excitement, because we realize that our God raised our Lord from death and he is alive forevermore and he highly exalted him and now he's sitting on the right hand of the father amen be all authority has been given unto him we have something to praise god about you have something to praise god about because all authority is is is, is invested in him and he is in control of all things so listen right where you are lift your hands and praise him because he's worthy to be praised all right bless the lord and thank god that that he is alive and well i know he's not in the grave i went there i, I went into the tomb it's empty he's not there he is risen he is alive so many express the celebration of easter through their praise they praise the risen christ we celebrate what he accomplished for us in his resurrection. I don't have the time to go into what went on behind the scenes when he was in the grave. But there was a whole lot of stuff that went on behind the scenes. And he got up from that grave with all power in his hand. And it is a wonderful thing to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord. You are saved because of that. I am saved because of that. And we thank God. We thank God for the benefits that we have through the resurrection. Do you know you have benefits? You have so many benefits. Hey, listen, I like if you just read Ephesians, the first chapter, <laughs> that's loaded with benefits, okay? So we have something to look forward to. We have great expectation. And people all over the world praise and celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. But, why the but? <laughs> i tell you why the but. Because do they embrace the one who they celebrate? Do they embrace the one that they celebrate? Do they embrace him? What do I mean by embrace? Embrace means to hold someone closely in one's arms, especially as a sign of affection. See, this is important. People are celebrating all over the world, but they have not embraced him. They have no affection for him. Their heart for him is not burning with desire and love for him. 
celebrating the resurrection, but not embracing it. They have no true affection for him. Do you love him? Do you have affection for him? How do you feel <laughs> in the time of celebration? Do you have, do, uh, are you, have you been intimate with him? Because I ask this question because love is the issue. All right? Love really is the issue. Many people honor him with their lips, but their hearts are far from him. They honor him with their lips. Yes, Lord, we praise you. Yes, Lord, we love you. Yes, Lord, we adore you. Yes, you got up. I'm so glad you got up. Aren't you glad you got up? Yes, you are. <laughs> so glad you got up. But their hearts are far from him. Let me tell you something, a story that many of you have probably read, no doubt. When Jesus rose from the dead, and there were two other disciples on the road, on the road to Emmaus. And as they were going down this road to Emmaus, as they were going this road to Emmaus, they were, they were, they were um, as we were walking, which is about seven miles from Jerusalem, Jesus joins himself to them as they were walking. And they began, you know, he, they were talking about all the things that had happened the last three days, you know, the, uh, the, you know all the, the, what Jesus went through and, and what the city went through. And uh, Jesus came to them and said, what are y'all talking about? You know, and so they began, to, they began to have a dialogue. And they said, the things that happened in Jerusalem, they said, what things? And they said, are you, the, they were like, are you for real? You know, are you for real? Are you actually asking us what things? Let me make a long story short. He walked with them for seven miles. And then he took the word of God and explained to them that it was necessary for Christ to suffer. He fulfilled the law and the prophets and the Psalms. So when they got to their destination, they, 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 they said, please, you know, stay with us. And so they sat down at the table. And when they sat down at the table, Jesus took the bread and he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to them. And their eyes were open. Their eyes were open. And the Bible says he disappeared from their sight. And they looked at one another. Can you, can you, imagine, can you imagine what they felt? Can you, can you just imagine what they felt? And so they said to one another, did not our hearts burn within us? Now this is really something because I'm talking about celebrating yet embracing, okay? Listen, how much, how much do you love him? Do you love him enough to allow him to place you into his hands and break you. Now, let me explain something. When Jesus took the bread into his hands, he blessed it and broke it and gave it. That's what he does into our lives. He blesses us. Many people love the blessing, but he also took that bread and broke it. That, my friend, is a part that we don't like. But the disciples would not be able to eat had he not broken it. Okay, so he blesses us. He breaks us, that process of breaking us. And then he gives us. Do you love him enough to allow him to break you so that he may give you? Think about it. And this is after the resurrection, all right? Jesus still is taking lives and blessing them and breaking them and giving them to people. Do you love him enough to sit at his feet like Mary did? Martha was just busy going about cooking and cleaning and just, 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 just busy, you know. And, you know, and she said, Lord, tell Mary to get up and help me. And Jesus said, Mary, uh, 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 Martha, chill out. Mary has chosen the best part. Why? Mary was sitting down at the feet of Jesus, listening to what he had to say. Do you love him that much? 
Do you love him enough to deny yourself? To take up your cross daily and follow him? Do you love him? Do you love him enough over your relationships? Jesus said, if you're going to follow me, you have to deny mother, father, sister, brother, houses, and land. Some words he said, you have to hate them, but he's not talking about literally hating them. What he's saying is, will you put me before your relationships? The question is the same as he asked Peter. Do you love me? Do you love me? There was a man by the name of Pastor Mark Clark of the Village Church in Canada, and he was talking about the resurrection. He is an apologetic, and he was, he was explaining how, how the resurrection happened and the evidence that he did rise. And people was in a frenzy. They were so excited. I mean, they were, the praise was, was intense. People were so happy. People were, were standing on their feet, giving God the praise and the glory because Jesus rose from the dead. They were so excited that the Father raised him up. And then he said, when he waited till everybody calmed down, he said, he said, Satan believes in the resurrection too, but it doesn't save him. Satan believes in the resurrection also, but it doesn't save him. Why? Because he doesn't trust it, cherish it, or, or treasure it. He doesn't do those things. See, you can believe it happened and celebrate it, but do you love it more than anything? Do you love it? Do you love, do you love, you know, Paul said that I might know him in the power of his resurrection, in the fellowship of his suffering. We, my God, the power of the resurrection changes people's lives. It is a love issue. Jonathan Edwards said this. He said, love is the main thing in saving faith, the life and power of it, by which it produces its great effects. It's, love is a very powerful thing. Love will have you <laughs> climbing up on mountains, going through valleys. You know, love will have you doing things that you never thought you would ever do when you love something, when you love people. You know, you will deny yourself in so many ways because you love people. You want to help people. You see, love produces great effects. When you, when we love him, there's something happens in our lives. We have been born again because God raised him from the dead. We have been born again. The effect is when you love him, you will be born again. Are you born again? Do you love him? Have you been changed from the inside out? Have your affections for him, have they, are they real? Are they burning? Do you have affections for him? You know what I read? There's another story in the Bible that I read, and we all heard this so many times, and, and I, I trust that you really hear what I'm getting ready to tell you right now. We all know about the woman with the issue of blood. She was bleeding. And her bleeding couldn't, wouldn't stop. So therefore, she was considered unclean. Okay? She should not have even been in the company of people. But she was considered unclean. But she heard about Jesus. And she said, if I can but touch the hem of his garment, I should be made whole. So what, what did she do? She pressed her way, you know, through the crowd. You know, pushing people out of the side. I, I don't... I, I really can't imagine that there was always so many people around Jesus, but she pressed her way through the crowd and touched the hem of his garment. And when she did, she was made whole. Jesus stopped in the midst of all what was going on around him. He stopped and he said, who touched me? Who touched me? And the disciples said, Lord, you know, all these people around you, thronging you, and you're asking who touched you? Jesus said, somebody touched me because I perceive virtue has gone out of me. And then the woman 
was made known and, and, and Jesus told her, you know, daughter, you're healed. Go in peace. But you know, when I begin to look at this story, I'm looking at two words. I'm looking at thronging and touching, thronging and touching. They asked him, Lord, all these people are thronging you. And you and you say you touch me. There is a difference when when people celebrate the resurrection and don't have affection for him. They are just thronging him. They are celebrating. They're caught up with the crowd. They're caught up with the atmosphere. They're caught up with all the things that Easter has. You know, they have Easter bunnies and new clothes and all this kind of stuff. They're caught up in it, you know, because Easter represents something new and fresh. But they're caught up in it and they are thronging him, but they haven't touched him. Celebrating, but have no affection. They're going through all, the, all the, the motions, and yet they don't know him. Do you know him? Are you just thronging him, or have you touched him? Have you pressed your way to get a relationship, to be in a relationship with him? So the question is, how do we embrace him? How do we embrace, how do we embrace him on this Easter Sunday that we don't just celebrate, but how do we embrace him? How do we express our affections for him? In Romans 10, 9 and 10 verses, Paul said, If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth the, the one confesses and is saved. Now stop, look at something. Look, look at this. You have heart and you have mouth. You have heart and you have mouth. For with the heart one believes and is justified. When a person accepts Jesus Christ from the heart, immediately God justifies you. He declares you righteous. Why? Because from the heart, your heart is saying your affections toward him. It's to, it's to him. And God says you are, you are justified. You are righteous. You are accepted. And then because of that, then you begin to confess with your mouth who Jesus is. We have a problem today because many people reverse it. Many people have the mouth, but they don't have the heart. <laughs> they have the mouth but they don't have the heart. They celebrate with the mouth, but their heart is so far from them. Some people don't even come to church until Easter. That tells me you have the mouth and not the heart. Because if you had the heart, you would, you would celebrate him all the days of your life. You would celebrate him knowing that you would not be what you are had it not been for the power of the resurrected Christ that is inside of you. You see, this is a, this is a love affair. This is a love affair. Celebration is fine, but do you know him? You've heard this scripture so many times that the Bible says that when Jesus comes on, on, on that day, he says, he says, many will say, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? Did we not do mighty works in your name? Did we not do all these things in your name? And Jesus is going to say, I never knew you. Depart from me. Wow. They celebrated. <laughs> they celebrated, they praised, but they didn't know him. Where is your heart today? Are you just celebrating him? Or are you embracing him? You see, there's something about embracing the Lord. Nothing else takes his place. Silver doesn't, gold doesn't, houses doesn't, riches doesn't, relationships doesn't. Nothing takes his place. Nothing. As much as I adore and love my wife. She can never take the place of Jesus Christ. As much as you love your children and your husband and your wife and, 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 and people in your life, they can never take his place. There's something about him that satisfies the soul. People will change on you. Relationships will change on you. 
Families will change on you. Friends will change on you. But the Lord remains the same. He doesn't change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Embrace Him. Love Him. Don't just celebrate Him. Because that is not enough. We that live in, the, in, in, in this western part of the world, we are so caught up on appearances. You know, the, the appearance has to be right. You know, and so, you know, we, 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 we were caught up on appearances when it comes to our relationship with the Lord. You know, we may look the part, act the part, sing the part, preach the part, teach the part, act the part. But many of us don't know him. We don't know him. And there are people all around this world that don't have nearly what we have, but yet to give their lives because they love him. Do you love him? Many people are, many, uh, uh, people are having churches in caves, in the woods, in the basements of their homes. Why? Because they love him. Do you love him? How do you embrace him? Repent. Give your heart to him. Lord, save me. Change me. Let me see who you are. Embrace him. Love. And, if you, and if you, you know, sir, in Revelation, it talks about in Ephesus, when Jesus, he said, I know your works. I know what you're doing. I know what you've accomplished, but you don't love me like you used to. Maybe there's some of you that you don't love the Lord like you used to. You're celebrating, but you don't love him like you used to. Your affection has been annihilated from him. You're, you're, you, have no, you have no affection for him. Something's wrong. It needs to be rekindled. It needs to be rekindled. Do we love the risen Christ? That, my friend, is the question. Do you love him? So after the dust has settled, on the celebration time, <laughs> after the music stops, the late Dora Coley used to sing this song, when the music stops, then I have to live my song. <laughs> after the celebration has stopped, now are you living? Because that's the question. Do you know Jesus in the pardoning of your sins? Have you been born again? The Holy Spirit regenerates you. He, he raises you out of death and brings you to life. There's nothing like it in this world. Nothing. Jesus is real. Jesus said, except you're born again, you cannot see or enter the kingdom of God. And the Lord loves you so much that he suffered. He lived. He suffered. He bled. He died. He was buried. He rose and ascended <laughs> so that you can be a part of of what he's doing in the earth, in his kingdom, that you can be adopted into his family. Many of you have had rough seasons in your life, rough past, but the Lord is able to heal you of your hurt and your wounds. He's able to heal you because he loves you. Do you love Jesus? Do you love the risen Christ? That is the question. For those of you that don't know Jesus Christ, we're here right now to pray with you that you might know what it is to have a relationship with Him. Because there's nobody else like Him. I promise you, there is nobody else like There's nobody else like Him. For real though. <laughs> he gives you such joy and such peace. Yeah, life can be full of trouble sometimes. Absolutely. But He is real. Jesus is real. And He cares. So if you need to accept Christ in your life right now, just bow your head and just close your eyes. It's just you and Him right now. You, you, you listen, you, you can't fix yourself up. You can't make yourself better. If you could, it wouldn't have been any need for Jesus to come. But He came for the sole purpose that He may fill your life with Himself. Okay? With Himself. And if you're here right now and you need Christ in your life, just say, Lord Jesus, I need you. I believe 
that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose again the third day. And Lord, I want you to change me. I want to know you. I want to know what it is to be called your son. I want to know what it is to walk with you and have fellowship with you. Lord, deliver me from the powers of darkness and set me free by the power of your blood. And I accept your blood right now. And I thank you for it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It's just that simple. If you meant it from your heart, listen. It's done. What do you do now? Get somewhere around a body of believers so that you can learn, you can grow. You can't do this by yourself. <laughs> Get into the Word of God. Read it. You know, you may not understand everything, but read it. He'll, you, you will begin to change just by reading the Word. But get among a body of believers so you can grow. Amen. You can grow and God will richly bless you. Amen. Listen. Celebrating and breaking. That's a good combination. You, when, you, when you're celebrating, you also embrace it. Wow, what an amazing, incredible sermon. Hopefully it was for you. I know it was for me. It inspired me to hold true to the resurrection and not just believe in it, but to truly embrace it because it is amazing. It's, it's sacred. It's the, it's the reason why we believe that Jesus Christ is Lord. Listen, now is the time we're getting ready to take communion together as a family. So if you have those communion cups that we may have delivered to you, or if you're at home and you have maybe some grape juice or some wine, and maybe you have some crackers or, or, or bread that's possibly unleavened, let's bring all those together and take communion together as a family because this is sacred and it's very special. Uh, so listen, um, I'm gonna move out the way. Apostle's gonna come back. We'll take communion together as a family and then we'll see you guys next week. Love y'all. Thanks for being with us here at our first communion service here at Church 110. Before we have communion, I want to say a few words just so we can understand what communion is all about. When you read the Old Testament, God constantly reminds His people, Israel, about it was He that was the one that delivered them from the bondage of Egypt and brought them through the Red Sea. He reminded them throughout the years that it was no one but Him. And He, and He alone, was their salvation. So when we talk about communion, communion is a major, major event that took place for us. It wasn't just the death of Jesus Christ and the burial of Jesus Christ, it was also His resurrection and His ascension. I'm reminded of what Paul said in 1 Corinthians 11, 23 through 26. He said, For I received from the Lord Jesus that instruction which I pass on to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is offered as a sacrifice for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant ratified and established in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Verse 26, for every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are symbolically proclaiming the fact of the Lord's death until he comes again. Listen to what he said. Do this in remembrance of me. Jesus did not want us to forget what he did. In other words, we are to have a recalling of what he did for us. Don't forget what I did for you. And this is what Jesus was saying. There were, there were, there were at least three things that he did. One, the giving of, of his body as a sacrifice. Two, the pouring out of, of his blood. I'm reminded of Isaiah 53, verses 6 and 10. It says, All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. 
And the Lord, listen to this part, but be careful. And the Lord laid on him the iniquity of us all. In other words, he took my sins and your sins, the Father did, and laid them on Jesus Christ for our salvation. He who knew no sin became sin that we might become the righteousness of God. And that's what he did. He took the sins of the world and placed them on Jesus Christ on the cross. And it goes on to says, but it was the Lord's good plan to crush him and cause him grief. Yet, when his life is made an offering for sin, he will have many descendants. You and I are the result of his death and burial and resurrection. And number three, what he did was for the establishment of the new covenant. In other words, an agreement that there will be forgiveness of sins for many. That includes you and I. Jesus Christ ratified the covenant, the agreement. And the wonderful thing about it is, it can never be broken. The blood sealed it. And when you accept Jesus Christ into your life, you are sealed unto the day of redemption because of the blood of Jesus Christ that he shed on the cross for our sins and the Holy Spirit came and took a virginity in our hearts. So today we're going to just have communion and remember what he did. Remember the blood that he shed. Remember how his body was beaten. Remember how he was spit upon. Remember how he was treated. Remember how the blood flowed from him. Not only before but not only on the cross, but on the way to the cross, the blood was shed. And every drop of his blood was shed for you and for me, that we might have the abundant life. And so if those of you that have your communion cups with you, we're going to have communion right now. And I want you to remember what he did, because what he did is beyond words. What he did is so, you know what he says, do this in remembrance of me. In other words, be affectionate about what he did. It is a very serious thing. Easter is a wonderful time because it, it commenced his death, burial, and resurrection. So before we commune together, I want you to get your communion cups. And as you see around top, because of the pandemic, we have these cups that you can just um, peel back the first layer and we will partake of his, of his body, which is the wafer in front, and then we will talk, partake of his blood uh, because of what he did on Calvary for our sins. Okay, but before we do, I want to pray. I want to pray that God will bless you. I want to pray that God will, will help you. I want to pray that God will allow you to see the, the seriousness of what Jesus did for us. If your life is not where it ought to be, Jesus shed his blood that it could be where it should be. <laughs> That's what he did. He loves us that much. So I want to pray. Father, thank you so much for giving your son for us. You laid all of our sins upon him. You said there was none righteous, no, not one. And he died for our sins. It pleased you to bruise him. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities and the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for suffering for us. Lord Jesus, thank you for carrying that cross. Thank you for shedding your blood. Thank you, O Lord, for allowing them, O God, to, to to inflict pain upon you because that was your pain was our pain. Lord, we give you praise for it. And I pray that everyone that partakes of this communion today, that your spirit will overshadow them and cause them to realize and to see just how much you love them. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. So let us commune, let's commune together. And the Bible says that he took bread and he broke it. And he said, this is my body. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us partake of his body. Thank you, Lord. 
Thank you. And then it says, after this, he took the cup and he said, drink ye all of it, for this is my blood that was shed for the remission of sins. To ratify the new covenant, a covenant that can never be broken, a, 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 an act on the cross that will ever be before the Father. Let us drink of his blood. Thank you, Lord. We, we worship you. We praise you. We thank you. We can never thank you enough for all that you've done for us. And we know that you told us to do this in remembrance of you until you come again. And we're looking forward to your coming. That you said in your word that you will not partake of the fruit of this vine anymore until you drink it anew in your Father's kingdom. And we thank you that you're coming for us and we give you praise and we give you glory. So Father, I bless everyone that partook of this communion and I pray that you lay your hand on them and bless them and strengthen them. And thank you for this time. Thank you for having communion with us. God bless you. Love you. See you next time.